Painting is not something that I'm strong in, though recently I've tried in hopes that I could move in that direction. I've always wanted to show my creativity through this medium while keeping my work as clean as possible in terms of the line work. For this painting, I am attempting to do the same thing, but in a slightly different style to allow more depth and the detail. When I was thinking of how I could make a painting that would signify the end of my high school years and show personal growth as an artist through that time, I wanted something that would not only wow the audience with the vibrancy and detail, but also give it symbolic meaning that draws from life and from me. The best way I thought of doing that was to draw from my childhood. I've always been a kid with a big imagination, and I've been able to showcase my imagination now, but I never had the skill to do so back then. So if I could focus hard enough to put myself back in the shoes of me from ages 5 to 9 years old, I could draw from my imagination of back then, but combine it with who I am now and create something that I believe will be one of the best things I've created as an artist to date. Though I can't have expectations like that, as I would need extensive pre-planning beforehand to achieve it. I try not to set my expectations too high for how the piece would turn out in the end, but I set high expectations in myself to have good work ethic and planning to get there. During this project, I know I spent over 50 hours painting. I don't really keep track of time, but after seeing how much time-lapse footage I got, I could safely say over 50. The planning that went into this was probably a few hours of concentrated work, while the rest was thought of sporadically throughout the days I was working on the framework for this piece. Usually, my concentrated energy that is spent in the act of creating the final work is not consistent, as my energy to work on the piece comes in bursts. Something I don't struggle with, though, is artist block, as I always have ideas in my head and I never sit down to draw and not draw because my mind is blank. There's always something that I can't create, but the issue is trying not to be distracted. As I said earlier, most of the critical decision making was done beforehand to prevent any issues in the middle of the piece, but that doesn't mean that there will still be obstacles. Some of the background was just left blank for me to figure out later in the piece. Color-wise, I had no idea what I was going to do for the color of the shirt, the koi fish, or how I would paint the dirt to look like actual dirt because I've never done any of that before. One of my biggest stressors with this piece was how it was going to look after I put all the color in, since there were so many undecided colors for some of the creatures in other parts. I didn't have a solid picture in my head that I could rely on. Yes, I did have a picture in my head, but the creatures always were different colors. What I had to do was once I painted the things I knew the absolute colors of, I figured out what everything else could be colored like, as I wanted to create a balance between all the creatures to make it look aesthetically pleasing on the layout of color and to make it look natural. Easy, right? I would say it was. It just takes patience and critical thinking. I found that it is important that if you're stuck on something, you ask the people around you for their opinion so you have a different perspective, and then with the new information you could formulate a new way to attack the issue at hand. I was lucky enough to have my close family and friends that saw me regularly to help me when I was stuck. They gave me little advice on what they thought would stick out and what would look natural during the process of this painting. For any other artists out there or people that have a passion and another hobby or activity that requires you to be very immersed in it, they could probably relate to the feeling that I get when I draw. Most times when I sit down to draw, as soon as the pen hits the paper, all sense of time is lost and my life is now singular with what I'm creating. There is no distance between me and the creation. I don't make decisions anymore, I just act on what I know needs to be done. Some people call it the zone. It can be traced back to the ancient Taoist philosophy of flow. What I care about is the way, which goes beyond skill. When I first began cutting up the oxen, all I could see was the ox itself. After three years, I no longer saw the whole ox. And now, I go by spirit and don't look with my eyes. Perception and understanding have come to stop, and spirit moves where it wants.
I'm confronted by a medium that I'm not very familiar with, I need to make sure that I keep a keen eye on what I actually do with it. I can't be as immersed in a painting as I am with some of my abstract drawings as I need a lot more attention and focus on every single stroke that I lay down with the brush and every single line that I make. That means that this is going to require a lot more energy than I am used to with a piece as most of my painting is actually going to happen in short bursts of time instead of a long sit down that could last anywhere from three hours to five. It's going to be probably around 20 minutes to 30 minutes and then I'm going to have to sit down and take a break because I don't really trust myself to be going on any longer with that because things could take a different direction without even me realizing it until I step back from the canvas. So yeah, I just got to keep an eye out for that. One of the main inspirations of this piece was the work of artist Hayao Miyazaki, director of many of the movies at Studio Ghibli. Miyazaki has won many awards for his movies, being universally recognized for his unique character designs and storytelling abilities, highly respected by everyone in the entertainment industry. I have only discovered his work a few weeks before I started painting this, and his skill for visual storytelling, being able to convey emotion without words, is what I wanted to try to achieve. The way that he is able to build a world that you could be immersed in amazes me. He not only pays attention to the main focus points, but also makes sure that the background is real as possible. He's able to capture both a magical world, but at the same time have a sense of realism that draws you in. What I tried to do is make the world around the kid so detailed that once your eyes recognize the main scene going on, you're drawn to the background, and you could see what all the little characters are doing. You can imagine who lives in the little tree houses, you could imagine where the koi fish swim off to, you could see the forest beyond, and only try to make sense of what's going on in there with your own imagination. Making the kid look curious and fixated on the forest spirit that he is staring at hopefully is able to make the viewer subconsciously mirror the boy's feelings, making them as intrigued and as immersed as the boy in the painting. Being able to bring all of this emotion into the viewer without having to say a single word is something that Miyazaki seems to pull off very well, and with this piece I hope to bring a sense of childhood and nostalgia to the audience, but with my own imagination.